Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I wanna show you how to set up a track mode on your Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. We're gonna go over updating a track mode to the latest version so we can add our system menu. It looks really, really great. I will leave all links in the description for you guys. So the first thing we need to do is get Flobs a track mode. This is already set up. Link is in the description. There are a few versions of this, but we're gonna go with version 0.5. This contains no artwork at all. Now, this is a download from Mega, so you might have to install Megasync. You'll need to sign up for an account and install Megasync to download this. This is an older version of RetroPie with an older version of a track mode, but this is the easiest way to get set up. We're gonna go through updating a track mode and updating RetroPie, so don't worry about that. Go ahead and download this. It's 2.5 gigabytes. It is a zipped file. After it's extracted, it's close to five gigabytes. Next thing you're gonna need are some snaps, which are movies. So when we go to a game in a track mode, we can see a movie playing in a little box. You can get everything you need from EMU movies, or you can just Google hyperspin snaps and possibly find something there. So the next thing I recommend you doing is find some wheel art. You can also just Google retro game wheel art and possibly come across something, or you can sign up with Hyperspin and download some packs. And finally, I'm just leaving this link here. If you want more themes for attract mode, you can go to the attract mode forums and there are some beautiful themes in here. So I have Flob's image downloaded right here. I've already extracted it. It's 4.7 gigabytes. I also have some ROMs, and in this tutorial, I'm only gonna be going over Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, and SNES. You can add whatever emulators you'd like, and it's basically the exact same as these three here. I'm just gonna do three for this video so it doesn't turn into a 10 hour video. And here's my artwork and videos. So when we're talking about hyperspin or a track mode, our videos are called snaps. Now you can make these yourself if you'd like to. After you're done setting this up and you have everything the way you want, you will feel so good about doing it yourself. You can find snaps online if you'd like to. You can also find wheel art online and I suggest doing that. We're just gonna go right here and I'm gonna show you the format that these are in. They are MP4 formats. Frame width is 320, frame height is 240. You can make these bigger, but to keep them small, keep them small. And here are the wheels. You will need wheels. So when we're going to choose our games, these are what we're going to see. We have Super Baseball. I mean, I got lots and lots of wheels here. System menu art is also another important thing. Remember, in this video, when I talk about snaps, I'm talking about videos. In this video, when I talk about wheel, I'm talking about the wheel art here. So these are system snaps. When we are in the system select menu or the menu displays within a track mode, we're gonna see kind of a compilation here playing in our little arcade machine or wherever you wanna put that snap at, whatever theme you're using. And the wheels for our system. So if we wanna select Game Boy Advanced, Neo Geo or Super Nintendo. Let's go ahead and flash Flob's Attract Mode. Now I have a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SD card. It's a class 10 and I'm just using a 32 gigabyte. You can use whatever size you'd like because when we install this, we'll need to expand the file system anyway. I'm gonna be using Win32 Disk Imager to flash my image to the SD card. It's just like setting up stock RetroPie. So right here, I'm gonna choose my SD card and you need to make sure this is your SD card. Mine is drive D. I'm gonna click on my blue folder and I'm gonna to navigate to where I downloaded Flob's attract mode version. 4.7 gigabytes. We're gonna click right. Read through this, make sure you have chosen your SD card and not another drive or a USB stick. Click yes. It will start the flashing process. Let this sit, it's five gigabytes, so it could take a little while. 
All right, guys, the write was successful to the SD card. Now what we're going to do is move to the Raspberry Pi. We're definitely going to have to come back to our PC. If you're using Windows, you're going to need to download two applications when we come back. If you're using Linux, you can actually just do all of this from the SD card. It's so much easier to do it from the SD if you're running Ubuntu or a form of Linux. But for this tutorial, I'll show you how to do it on Windows because I know a lot of you are running Windows. Let's move to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to plug in our Ethernet or connect to Wi-Fi, a controller, and we're also going to need a keyboard. Let's go over there now. Now that we have the image booted up, we need to launch Emulation Station and use your keyboard for this. We're going to expand the file system and we're going to set up our controller. Then we're going to go over updating RetroPie and updating a track mode. A track mode needs to be updated to have the really nice looking system select menu. It only works with a track mode 2.2.0. Scroll down to launch Emulation Station and press Enter. Now we need to expand the file system. Very simple to do. Take your keyboard and press F4. From here, we're going to type in sudo raspi-config. Press enter. The very first option, press enter. That's expand file system. Press OK. We're going to scroll down to finish. Yes, we would like to reboot. Now that we've expanded our file system, let's go ahead and set up our gamepad. This will set up our gamepad for emulation station and while playing the game. So we need to do this first. We're going to scroll over to the RetroPie logo and launch it. You need to be connected with your Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So if you're not on Ethernet, you need to go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi now. Scroll to RetroPie Setup and enter the menu. All right, we're going to use our keyboard in this menu since we already have it set up. Let's go ahead and update the RetroPie Setup script. In the gray box at the top left-hand corner, you can see the version of the RetroPie Setup script. That's 4.0.1. This is not the version of RetroPie we are running. Press OK and you need to be online for this to work. Yes. It's going to fetch the latest version. Press OK. It actually installs very quickly. Now, if we look at the version, we are on version 4.1.5. Now, this is only the version for the RetroPie setup script. We are about to update RetroPie to the latest version. The very top, basic install. Now this can take a few minutes, anywhere from five to 30 minutes, depending on your internet connection. Basic install. Yes, we are gonna install all packages. This is going to update RetroPie to the latest version. Press yes. Sit back, let it do its thing. It's gonna finish up. It's gonna download all the latest cores, all the latest packages and install them for us. Okay, now that that's finished, we are updated to RetroPie 4.1 or whatever the latest version of RetroPie is as of you doing this tutorial. Let's go ahead and reboot. Yes. So we have RetroPie updated to the latest version. We're going to go ahead and update a track mode. First thing I recommend is going to the RetroPie logo and scrolling down to show IP. Copy your IP address down. Now this is just a safe measure in case you can't connect with the method that I'm going to show you. In the description of this video, I am leaving a Dropbox text file on how to update a track mode to 2.2.0. I'm going to be doing it all from my Windows PC over network, I'm going to be using an SSH application called Putty. But if you're hardcore enough, you can just press F4 on your keyboard and do it all from right here. Let's move back to the PC now and update a track mode. 
It's now time to update a track mode. My Raspberry Pi is still powered on and connected to the same exact network as my PC. If you want to do this from the Raspberry Pi, you can. All you have to do is press F4 and type in these commands. But since we're on Windows, we need an SSH application. I suggest using PuTTY. Link is in the description, very easy to download. You click it here. If you download the EXE, you don't have to install anything. You can start it directly from the EXE. Since we're here, let's go ahead and download WinSCP. We're gonna be using this to transfer our menu artwork to the Raspberry Pi. This will allow us to transfer files from our Windows PC to our Raspberry Pi over network. We can also show hidden files, and that's exactly what we need to do. Now that we have both of these downloaded, we're gonna start off with PuTTY. Open PuTTY and make sure your Raspberry Pi is connected to the same network as the PC running PuTTY. Host name or IP address. If you cannot connect by typing in RetroPi, you need to put your IP address right here. I'm gonna click Open. And I'm actually gonna snap this over to the right. We're gonna log in with Pi, press Enter, and our password is raspberry. Now there is a link in the description. You can go ahead and download this. This is how we're going to update a track mode. It's very easy to do. Now I have run into the problem when I'm trying to download something from GitHub lately. It has asked me for my username and password. If it asks you for your username and password, you will need to make a GitHub account. I'm hoping it's not going to right now, but in the last month, every once in a while, it will ask me. It's kind of weird. I'm not sure if it's new security or what the deal is, but this is very simple to do. Over here, you can actually just copy and paste if you'd like to. It'll be CD, enter. Now we're going to make a directory, MKDIR, and the directory or the folder is gonna be called develop. Press enter. Now we need to go to that directory and we're gonna do CD develop. Now we're going to download the attract mode update files. So we need to type this in or copy and paste. I'm gonna copy and paste because it's gonna be easier on me here. Press enter. And it didn't ask me for my password, which is awesome. Next up, we need to get into the directory we just downloaded and we will just CD attract. That's going to bring us to the newly created directory. From here, you can copy and paste like I've been saying, but if you want, we're going to do make space, all cap, use GLES equals one. Now this is going to take a little bit of time when we press enter. It's going to compile the new update for a track mode. All right, a track mode is almost finished updating. The last thing we need to do is type in sudo make install. And this is a very quick process here. So sudo make install, press enter. There we are. So now what we're gonna do is just move back to the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna show you how to set up a few emulators. Then what we're gonna do is come back to the PC. We're gonna install our menu artwork our ROMs and our game artwork. Let's move to the Pi now. Let's go ahead and enter a track mode now. From the menu here, we'll go to the RetroPie logo. Scroll down to restart in a track mode. After we do this one time, every time we boot up the Pi, it's going to boot into a track mode until we tell it to boot into emulation station. So here we are in a track mode. We still have our keyboard connected because we're gonna need this to set everything up. First thing I recommend doing is pressing tab on your keyboard. We're gonna go to controls. And from within here, depending on what controller you are using, you need to set up your attract mode controller buttons. So for me, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller and it actually works for me already. If you have something else like a PS3 controller, or even an arcade stick, I recommend going through each one of these, use your keyboard, 
So I'm gonna go to the first one, back, exit, confirm, press enter, and you need to remove every input that says joy. After you remove all of the joy inputs, go ahead and set your controller up. So I don't have to do that right now, but you need to go down the list and remove everything that has joy in it. Now that controller is only for a track mode, for navigating a track mode like this. I'm using my Xbox 360 controller now. After you've set up your controller, press tab on your keyboard. We're gonna go to displays. Display menu options. Now this is our system menu select. Press enter. Menu style layout is default, but I'm gonna change this to robo spin. I love the way the robo spin layout looks. Press enter. We're gonna go back. Now under controls again, you need to find display menu and you need to set up a hotkey. So for me, I'm gonna add D on my keyboard, but I'm also going to add my center Xbox button. Press escape, escape, escape. Press D on your keyboard or whatever hotkey you set up to go to your system selection menu. And right now, all we have is a track mode set up and exit a track mode. We need to set up some emulators and it's very simple to do so. Press tab on your keyboard, emulators. Now these are your emulators. We're just gonna go to something simple like Nintendo SNES. We're gonna go to the very top. Your emulator name, obviously Nintendo SNES. Your executable, now all of these are already set up. What this is gonna do, the executable, tells it where to go to launch the SNES emulator. Command arguments, working directory, ROM paths. Now the ROM paths stay the same between a track mode and retro pie. So as you see, home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, SNES. ROM extensions, the same as RetroPie. System identifier, Super Nintendo. Info source scraper is going to be the game's DB. Now leave it like that. Now this is where we're gonna pull our artwork from. So we're not using flyers and we're not using marquees in this build here. We're using snaps, which are videos, and wheels are how we're gonna select our game. So now it's time to go back to the PC and add some ROMs. Everything here is already set up. We just need our games in place. If I was to click on generate collection ROM list right now, we're not going to have any ROMs, but it's going to create the directory for us in the menu select. Now if we go to displays, we have Nintendo SNES. So I'll press D on my keyboard. A track mode set up, exit a track mode, and Nintendo SNES. If you remember, we now have a new option for Nintendo SNES. Before, when we started, we only had exit a track mode and a track mode set up. If we go to Nintendo SNES, there's nothing here right now because we don't have any games. One thing I should have mentioned before was I like this to boot up directly to this menu here. Now we're going to add some artwork and we're going to add some snaps. Don't worry about that but press tab on your keyboard, go to general, scroll to startup mode, and we wanna select show displays menu. Exit. Now every time we start up, it's going to come to this menu here. Let's go back to the PC. I'm gonna add some ROMs for SNES, Neo Geo, and Game Boy Advanced. Then I'll show you how it looks after all your artwork set up. It's time to add some ROMs and our artwork here. Like I said, you should have downloaded WinSCP. We're gonna open it up. What this is gonna allow us to do is connect to our Raspberry Pi and view the file system. We can view and edit it. Now you need to be on the same network as your Raspberry Pi, just like when we used PuTTY. Under host name here, RetroPie, Username is Pi. Password is Raspberry. Now go ahead and save this. 
That way it's here all the time. Click Login. Update. We'll have to put our password in again, which is Raspberry. We are now inside of the Raspberry Pi or RetroPie's file system. As you can see, we have RetroPie here, RetroPie setup. It might look a little confusing, but we're only going to enter a few of these folders here. I'm going to open up my folder with my ROMs and my artwork. So the first thing to do is go to Options, Preferences, Panels, and Show Hidden Files. This needs to be checked here. We're going to go to the very end of the file system here. Should look like this. Bin, and at the bottom we should have VAR, VAR. We want to go to home, pi, dot attract. This is where we're going to add our artwork. Menu art is our system art. So if you have any system art that you'd like to add, the videos or the snaps are going to go into the snap folder. So right now I have Super Nintendo Entertainment Center, SNK, Nintendo Game Boy Advance and a track mode setup. We're going to drag these in here. They need to be named exactly the same as the emulator within a track mode. So some of these might not show up right now. So right here I'm actually going to rename this to Nintendo SNES because I know that's what it needs to be named. We're going to back up on both of these. We're going to go to wheel. This is where our wheel art for our systems is going to go. And I'm going to rename this one. Now that I named Nintendo SNES correctly, this will show up for me. Next thing we need to do is add some ROMs. Now you can always add ROMs over network the old fashioned way with typing in backslash backslash all capital retro pie. But since we already have win SCP open, let's go ahead and do it this way. So we'll go all the way back home pie retro pie ROMs. First one I'm going to find is Game Boy Advanced, GBA. So what I'm going to do is take my Game Boy Advance ROMs, place them right here. This is our ROM directory. Then I'm going to go back to my artwork folder and find my Game Boy Advance artwork. I'll go to Snap here. Your snaps and wheels need to be named exactly what the ROM is named. As you can see, I have the exact names of Air Force Delta Storm, Aladdin, and Alex Ferguson's Player Manager 2002. The only reason I chose these is because it was easy to get to. So we'll open the snap and we'll place our videos in the snap folder. We're going to back up once. We're going to open up wheel and find our wheel art over here. These need to be named the exact name of the ROMs also. So I'll continue with this same scheme here for Neo Geo. I will go to my Neo Geo ROMs and I'll drop my Neo Geo ROMs in here. I'll find my artwork and snaps, snaps. wheel and my wheel art for Neo Geo. We got one more to do here and that will be SNES. So I'll take my SNES snaps and I'll place them in my snap folder and I'll take my wheels and I'll place them in my wheel folder. 
Now I'm going to add my SNES ROMs and they are named exactly the same name as my wheel and snaps. There you have it. All we need to do now is go back to the Raspberry Pi and generate our ROM list. Let's go over there now. I'm back. I have not rebooted at all and as you can see I have my attract mode logo and my SNES logo. I did not add an exit attract mode logo. You can make one yourself or find one online. We have our video and our wheel already showing up for attract mode and already showing up for Super Nintendo. Press tab on your keyboard. We're going to go to emulators and we're going to generate a ROMs list for the other two emulators I set up. Nintendo Game Boy Advanced. Press Escape, Emulators, Neo Geo. Generate Collection ROM List. Back up, and we now have our Attract Mode logo. Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo. So if we enter these menus now, as you can see, it's very plain Jane. What we're going to do is change the look of this. Press tab on your keyboard. Go to displays. Now after you've generated a ROM list for each one of these, they will show up under displays. Let's change the way Neo Geo looks. We're going to scroll to the top and the layout is going to be set at basic. But I want this to look pretty decent, so I'm actually going to choose RoboSpin again. There are tons of themes. You can also download themes from the Attract Mode website and add them. RoboSpin. Now it looks good. Let's try to make it look just a little bit better. We'll press Tab, Displays, Neo Geo, Layout Options, and up at the top here we can select the skin. I'm going to change mine to Moon, and I'm going to change the background to Retro. So we'll exit out of here, and that looks good to me. You will continue the same way with all of them. So I'm just going to hit D on my keyboard really quick. If we go to Game Boy Advance, you can see, looks kind of crappy. Tab, Displays, Game Boy Advanced, and we're going to change the layout of this. And I will change this to something different. Just go to... So there's a Final Burn, Alpha, Cools, Coin Op, Basic, a Track Man. Now to get really good ones, we're gonna, just going to go with Robo Spin Beta. You're going to need to add some other themes. Pressing D or whatever hotkey you set up to enter this menu here. We're going to change the Super Nintendo look now. Tab. Displays. Nintendo SNES. And there's a few in here that look pretty cool. I don't really like the way this looks, but there are lots that you can download on a track modes website. The community over there is really, really cool. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. That is just a quick, basic setup of a track mode. You can use this on any size SD card and make your own a track mode. You'll need to match the names of the games in order for artwork to show up. The same for this system select menu. It needs to be matched to the name you see at the bottom, SNK Neo Geo. So the artwork needs to be named SNK Neo Geo. I'll be doing a follow-up video on this. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. But the best place to go for answers is the Attract Mode Forum. This is set up the same way as the PC version. We're just using different directories because we're using RetroPie. Like always, thanks for watching.